The respiratory system in the cat is set up a little bit differently in the lungs than what you find in the humans. We indeed have different lobes, but not anywhere near as, uh, as extreme or big a case as we'd find within the cats. Um, so we'll go through those first. We take a look. Now remember that lungs are there for respiration. They're not there for breathing. The difference is basically the diaphragm is a muscle. That is the mechanism that makes breathing possible. So breathing is a physical act, it's a muscular action. The exchange of gases is what we call respiration. And that's what the lungs are truly for. We find a lot of uh, veins and arteries are going to be going and feeding into that. That's why they're so close uh, to the heart th themselves. Makes a lot easier for that respiration and exchange of gases. So we take a look at, on the cat, we actually find on each side one, two, three, and then there was one right in the middle, and then they're named similarly on the other side. So this is the cat's right. This would be the right apical lobe. This would be the cardiac lobe, because it's kind of in the middle, right along with the heart. And this is the diaphragmatic lobe, because it sits right on the di diaphragm. Apical, because apical means top, then descriptive for the heart and for the, uh, the diaphragm. Then there's one lobe in the middle that's going to be an intermediate. Now we'll work our way to the left side. We'll also see the diaphragmatic lobe right here. Left diaphragmatic, left cardiac, left apical. Now as we work our way up, we'll see that the trachea is one big cartilage tube. And you can feel on your own throat, preferably with clean hands after not dissecting the cat, you can feel those little rings. And those rings, are they're present in cat, they're cartilage rings, and we can see inside uh, the trachea itself and doing it that way. Now I'm actually going to be opening within the larynx as well, so you can see vocal cords with, uh, for the cat, but you know it's important to see with the uh, trachea itself to see that it is one tube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just with the point of my scalpel, just kind of cut my way up. Normally with my classes what I'll do is I'll make a small hole down here and into the trachea itself uh, and insert a straw and rather than suck juices out I'm going to blow and you'll see that you can actually inflate the lungs that way. But for those purposes of this dissection we'll just show you inside. This is in fact just a tube that looks like a straw and it's reinforced inside. Um, no fluids, no no anything, just a little moist mucus to allow for that ex air exchange so we wouldn't find anything there. Now, as we work our way over here, we're up into the larynx itself. And as I go into the larynx, the larynx is what we commonly call the voice box. As we go into the larynx, I would expect to see little flaps. Since this is the voice box, yeah, cats do have a voice, even though they're meowing, we would st still see little flaps. Use my scalpel, cut a little bit more. Cut the transverse jugular, and I'll actually work my way up a little bit higher so you can see a little bit better. And here we see little flaps marking where the vocal cords are. Right here. That's a little flap. A lot of people take a look at vocal cords and they want to see little strings and things like that. Actually, they're just little flaps that vibrate against one another. So there's a vocal cord. Here's the other side. Okay, and so they'll just vibrate back and forth and make uh, make the sounds that would be the voice. So this would be the larynx. Okay, where the vo vocal cords are housed, going down to the trachea, going down into the lungs. Now this will actually because the the trachea has to uh, specialize into either the right or left side, we're going to find that it's going to form a, uh, the principal bronchi. Okay, the, a bronchus, if you think bronchitis, is an inflammation of the lung tubes, basically, of the bronchi. So a person with bronchitis coughs a lot and things like that. A bronchus is just the first division as it goes into the right and left sides, uh, right and left lungs. 
Now it'll form secondary bronchi and so on and make their way down smaller and smaller into the individual air sacs that we find within the lungs. Those are called alveoli. They're little tiny air sacs. They'll basically all work together for gas exchange and have a close interaction with blood vessels, working their way to capillaries, um, the veins, the arteries, everything to exchange those gases.